Hey guys, welcome back to a brand new video. And in this video, I'm gonna be putting an end to the age old debate. SMMA versus dropshipping. Now, this has been a very talked about topic and I finally wanted to put an end to this conversation with this in-depth video. This video is gonna be of insane value for those of you who are thinking of starting an online business. You're seeing people crushed with uh, dropshipping, right? You're seeing people crushed with social media marketing agency and now you can't quite decide which one is best for you. Well, after this presentation, you're gonna have a very clear idea of what is the right business model for you. And finally, for those of you who have started your social media marketing agency already, I'm going to be revealing my 10 year plan. What does life look like after SMMA? What is my 10-year plan and how could your 10-year plan look like after SMMA? So really excited for this. We're going to be hopping on my computer and we're going to be looking at number one, the pros. Pros of both starting a social media marketing agency and a drop shipping business. I'm going to be taking a look at all this from an unbiased perspective, okay? We're also going to be taking a look at the cons of an SMMA and the cons of a drop shipping business. And finally, I'm gonna be giving you my take, my personal opinion, and the true opportunity that lies ahead in the online business space. Two things you need to know about this presentation before we start is, number one, I could not care less about which one you pick. Honestly, if you don't pick SMA, great, because then I have uh, less competition. Obviously, I'm just joking, but I really want you guys to understand that I'm not vouching for a specific model. This is just straight facts. And number two is, I'm never gonna sell the idea that making money online or you know starting a social media marketing agency or starting a drop shipping business or an Amazon FBA uh, business, whatever it is, I'm I'm never gonna sell the idea that you can get rich quick, and I'm never gonna sell the idea that it's easy to start making money with them. And so if that is what you're expecting from these business models, then you can probably click away. Now, it is simple, but it's not easy. And there's definitely business models out there, like SMA, for example, that are much more simple to get started than, for example, real estate. No one can argue about that, but being successful with SMA and being successful in anything in life really takes hard work, takes dedication, and it takes following a narrow path, usually laid down by someone else, and following that narrow path step by step. So without further ado, let's get right into it. And honestly, the reason why I'm making this is because I wish someone had told me this when I started my first e-commerce brand when I was 16 and I was just a kid with a lot of energy, a dream and a decent work ethic. So guys, let's get right into it. Let's get right into the presentation. SMMA versus dropshipping. Let's get started. So finally putting an end to the age old debate using an unbiased approach. And that is one of the things that I want you guys to keep in mind while watching this video. I don't really have a preference. You know, I don't want you guys to go ahead and pick SMA. I really don't have any, you know, any benefit. Um, I don't really benefit from you guys picking SMA. And technically I did say that, you know, I don't really care, but at the same time I do care because I, I you know, I quite, quite frankly, I do care about your success. And um, I wish I had seen this earlier when, you know, as I said, when I started my e-commerce business, uh, simply because it would have saved me a lot of cash a lot of time and a lot of effort that I could have channeled into the right business model and I could have moved further up in life much, much, um, you know, much, much earlier on in my uh, journey. So that is what I, I want you guys to keep in mind. Technically, I said I don't really care, but at the same time, I do. So it's, it's kind of a, a dichotomy. And here is what we are gonna cover. The first thing is the pros, so side-by-side -side comparison of the pros for each business model. The cons, side-by-side -side comparison of the pros for each, uh, of the cons, let's just say, uh, for each business model. And the final thing is the true opportunity, which business model makes more sense. And so let's start with the pros. And uh, the pros for SMA is, the first things first is close to zero dollars to start, right? You're selling a service. Hence, there's no cost of goods sold. It is much more beginner friendly simply because you can get anyone with pretty much an internet connection and a brain can get started, right? So there's a very low barrier to entry uh, and you can scale by reinvesting earnings as you go, okay? And that, that's one of the things that I love about SMA because look, you can get started with pretty much zero uh, dollars to your name and then once you sign that, that first client, then you can reinvest back into better softwares, into um, just a, a, you know, a, a, a much more robust system, et cetera, et cetera. And so that is the first thing. The second thing is $10,000 a month. You can scale to $10,000 a month which, with much less complexity and much faster typically. I'm talking profit here, okay? And on, quite, quite frankly, I don't know any business model, uh, at least online, uh, where you can scale to 10K a month in such a quick manner uh, and with such like little overheads and, and complexity, okay? And, and that's a big thing. And, and that's one of the things that I'm gonna really come back to uh, during the presentation is the fact that like, there's not much complexity to SMA. And that is why I love SMA as a, as a, as a business model, uh, especially as you start out, because you're literally, you, you, the only thing that you need to care about is 
marketing is and not even that but we go even more niche and we go into facebook ads right and that is the one thing that that is really the area uh, of control that that's really the, the sphere of control and uh, it is much much more reduced and much less complexity than for example having you know different uh, facets and, and aspects of a business which could be customer service which could be paid you know uh, marketing uh, and not only marketing but paid ads email marketing uh, it could be influencer campaigns etc etc which you typically get with um uh, uh, for example yeah, an e-commerce business Okay, and uh, the third thing is profit. What you make is pretty much what you keep. You can expect 80 percent uh, uh, plus profit margins, and that is huge, right? The fact that like what you make is pretty much what you keep, and eighty percent, you know, when you start out, eighty percent is a very very safe estimate, and that is one of the things that I want you guys to keep in mind. And the final thing is longevity. Uh, you know, I've, I've spoken about this in other videos. I've spoken about this in um, earlier videos, but SMA has true longevity. Businesses will always need marketing agencies to take care of their marketing. Many establishments businesses are yet to tap into the full power of digital marketing. And I covered this in my uh, free masterclass. So if you guys haven't checked it out, it's completely uh, free. Uh, there's not, nothing for sale. And uh, so if you guys can, uh, you guys can check it out after this video. But basically there, I, you know, I, I literally give you examples of businesses who are you know, very, very established. They're making a lot of uh, money and, and revenue, but they're not even tapping into the power of digital marketing, right? Which is really what the underpriced attention is and the biggest opportunity to make incredible returns is. And so that is uh, the, the, the final thing. Uh, and it also provides you with value transferable skills uh, for later in your entrepreneurship journey. And that was really important for, for me when I when I started out in, um, in SMA, what was the fact that like, Look, yes, I wanted a business model that could, you know, and I got into SME more out of almost desperation than inspiration uh, because I wanted a, a, a business model that not only generated incredible cash, right? And that would allow me to, you know, almost pursue my dreams and, and drop out of, uh, out, of uni, uh, out of university, but also gave me valuable skills and wasn't just a one-trick pony where, yes, I could make money uh, one year, but then the next year I would be pretty much not only um, cashless, right? Uh, and, and, and without money, but I would not have gained really valuable skills which then I can later down the line use for other businesses and that is why and, and to be honest as, as an entrepreneur this is honestly a very important thing to uh, keep in mind when you're starting a business model because you often hear it right you often hear that if a millionaire right now who has made their fortune uh, when, when completely broke they could just regain the, the fortune right why because it's not so much the, the fortune or, or the, the money that they've uh, amassed but more more the person they've become right the skills they've garnered and those skills are precisely what allows them to regain their fortune if they were ever to lose it right and so it's very very important that we're not just jumping into into something that that sure is going to make us money but it's not really going to allow us to grow as a person and develop our skills as, uh, as an entrepreneur so that was really important for me and, and you know I, I love that sma actually gives you this uh, this transferable skills like marketing sales uh team management um team communication client communication and uh, etc etc i could uh, i could go on for for a while now now let's take a look at dropshipping there is no doubt that dropshipping is much more scalable right it has more scalability potential because you can duplicate product and that is one of the kind of drawbacks from sma was is the fact that yes you've got insane profit margins yes it's quite simple to get to that 10k mark right because you only need you know pretty much you only need five clients paying you 2k a month which isn't you know it's not huge right uh, but at the same time as a, you know, as a B2B service-based business model, it's not as scalable. You can't really scale flesh, right? Uh, you can't really scale human, but you can duplicate a product. And the second thing is potential to build a brand. You can build a brand that could grow into something bigger. And I'll talk about this uh, briefly uh, in the next slide. The way I see most um, people that jump into a, a dropshipping go wrong is that they focus way too much on cashing in and you know having this winning product instead of actually building a brand that has longevity and that can become this in, in, just insane monster right uh, that can actually add value to people right and so you know i'm not blaming anyone if you're jumping into dropshipping just to make money all power to you for sure but most people that jump into dropshipping they, they try to find this winning product that doesn't really add value to people and that that really doesn't have longevity right it might be hot for six months but then you're on to the the next product right and testing you know a bunch of different products etc etc and I'll talk about this in, in just a second, but that could have worked four or five years ago or, or even you know two years ago. Um, but now it's all about the customer experience, right? People want to connect to brands, right? And nowadays it's not so much having a winning product, but having an incredible brand experience, right? And, and brand congruence across the whole customer journey. And this is something that, you know, for our e-commerce clients, we know a lot about, right? Because we remind them of this every single day, right? And we want to make sure that we have an incredible customer journey because as I said, customer experience is going to be the most value, uh, value KPI in 2020 uh, and moving forward for uh, e-commerce businesses. So that those are the pros. Uh, now onto the cons. 
the cons of SMMA is, as I said, is, is, is just simply not uh, as scalable as uh, dropshipping or e-commerce. Uh, above the 40 to 50K month profit mark, uh, you really have to put in place more layers uh, if you want to scale, which can cut into the profit margin, okay? And, you know, increases, uh, as a result, it increases complexity. At around 10K, even 20K a month, uh, you pretty much just need your the, the person that your, your team member who delivers the service and yourself, and you can build a widely profitable agency that way. Um, but as you as you continue to scale, as you continue to take on more clients, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, you're gonna need more people in the team. Uh, simply because again, it's not it's not as yes, you can get your agency uh, to be very productized and very systemized, and you can put you know you can automate it to a very large extent, uh, extent which is what I've done. But there's there's always going to be that very human element, and that human element is very necessary. Okay, at the end of the day, you have to realize that a B two B service, right, and a service based business is a lot about the human relationship and the interpersonal side of things. Uh, and so, obviously, you're gonna have to bring in more uh, A players into the team to take care of that side of uh, of the business. Um, the the next thing, the cons of dropshipping um, is number one. I truly believe that it is a dying business model. Long shipping times, and, and there's really three pillars to this, right? Number one is uh, long shipping times. Number two is Facebook's resistance against dropshipping advertisers. And this has been widespread, especially as of late. They are really cracking down on dropshipping stores simply because it, it, it's not really a good experience for the customer, right? And if you guys don't know, what Facebook does is when someone buys a product from a Facebook ad, it will actually send, uh, send them a customer satisfaction survey, okay? And on that survey, there'll, there'll be questions like, are you satisfied with the product? How is the shipping time? Was the customer service good, et cetera, et cetera. And if you get uh, enough bad scores, your account is gonna get shut down, or if it doesn't get shut down, it's gonna get um, uh, restricted um, reach, okay? And it is not what you want, okay? And it, it, there's really no way to compete against other brands if you've got restricted reach. And that's really just the truth, right? If, if, if uh, your competitor is paying, if your competitor has a CPM of, let's just say, $5, and you've got a CPM of $15, okay? There's really no way you can compete when it comes to Facebook ads. And unfortunately for most uh, dropshipping brands, because you haven't built that brand, most of the traffic comes from Facebook ads and paid advertising, okay? So that is the second thing. And the final thing is poor customer experience. It's killing many dropshipping stores. People, you know, as I said, people nowadays, especially in 2020, people are seeking that human connection, that human element, right? That human touch. And, and the brands that are, are really winning, I'm talking Gymshark, I'm talking uh, SoundCloud, uh, SoundCloud, I'm talking uh, Take Care Of, they have that human element. In fact, uh, what's really hot is personalization, right? Why? Because people are looking for that humanization, almost that human touch, right? That, that personalized touch. And that is why, for example, the, you know, the, the ads that we run for our, our clients, even the email campaigns that we set up for them, it is very pers uh, personalized and it speaks to the stage of the funnel that that person is at, right? So that they feel like they're spoken to, okay? And so that is, um, that is what I would say on customer experience. Uh, and so, what I would say is that is dropshipping. Now, I'm not saying that is e-commerce, right? I truly believe e-commerce is here to stay. In fact, it is, you know, right now it is booming. Uh, and in fact, e-commerce is our niche, right? I live, breathe and sleep e-commerce pretty much. Uh, and uh, I love learning about branding, building a brand online, et cetera, et cetera. And that is what we do for our clients. So I truly, truly believe in the power of e-commerce. Um, and I'm, I'm very bullish on it. It's just dropshipping, right? And I want you guys to, to really differentiate between the two. There, there's a big difference between the two. So that is the first thing. The second thing is many moving parts. If you want to have a successful e-commerce business, you must master many different aspects. I'm talking marketing, logistics, branding, customer, uh, customer service, product development, uh, R&D even, et cetera, et cetera. It's, it's got many layers of complexity. And I can tell you that because when I started my first uh, e-commerce brand, okay, it was a uh, streetwear a clothing brand, okay? Um, I was around 16, 17 when I did that and uh, I lacked in a lot of different aspects, right? And I, what I can tell you is it, is, it is obviously very hard to master all these aspects. So imagine you are new to entrepreneurship and then you have to master not only one thing, which could be, you know, for SMA, it could be just like Facebook ads and paid ads and knowing the value of that and the benefits of that and understanding a bit about your niche, who you're uh, serving. You not only have to learn about paid ads and marketing, but you also have to learn about customer service, email marketing. You have to learn about product development, R&D, um, you know, how to design products that people will love, branding, how to tell a story, there's, you know, packaging. 
uh, logistics even like th there's so many moving parts right and as a, as a beginner entrepreneur that is just a lot to take in right and yes you might have you, you may have a great product but there's going to be different areas of your e-commerce uh, business that is going to lack i'm not saying don't get into a business model because you don't know something right in, in fact I'm, I'm a very very I'm a, I'm a firm believer in just jumping straight into it and learning as you go honestly that is one of the ideas that i resonate with the most and i've applied it all across my life up, up to this point um but it is much more overwhelming. It's gonna be very hard for you to get an edge over other e-commerce brands who have been in the space for a while now, okay? And they've got even maybe a team that, that you know, is, is literally dedicated for each one of those areas, okay? Uh, and, and you're competing against these people. So I'm not saying you can't be successful with it. I'm just saying it, it, it's, it's just honestly almost shooting yourself in the foot, okay? Uh, so. That is the second thing. Uh, the third thing is low profit margins. Most e-commerce stores take uh, home 30% or less in profit after cost of goods sold, staff, et cetera, et cetera. And look, if you're, if you're starting out, um, I'm, I'm most entrepreneurs who start out in business, uh, the reason why they start out in business is for the money, right? And honestly, that is just a reality. Uh, I'm not saying the main motivation is the money, but one of the main drivers is having good cash flow, right? To maybe be able to move out of their uh, parents' house or drop out of uni or pursue their dreams or, um, you know, almost be validated by, by society almost uh, and feel like they have a successful business, right? But I truly believe that starting an e-commerce brand, you have to be willing to not, not so much care about the money, right? Uh, especially at first, because an e-commerce brand and building like a building an actual brand that adds value to people, you may not be very profitable, especially at the start, right? Because you, you're just really investing into maybe product, into customer service. And so you're not really optimizing for, for profit. The problem comes when most people go into this um, business model with the, the, the sole goal of making money, right? And honestly, this is just my opinion, right? I'm not saying it's right. I'm not saying it's, it's, it's wrong. And so long story short, in my opinion, for e-commerce, you, you have to be willing to not really have profit in mind, especially at the start. And I know for a fact that, you know, when I start my, my e-commerce business, I'm not going to be so much optimizing for profit. I'm building my passion project, right? Because I know it will pay off in the future. And so that, that's how I would approach e-commerce and, and this type of business model. This is the cold hard truth about uh, dropshipping. You have to have some sort of uh, initial investment uh, into it, right? Uh, you can't just, you know, for example, with SMA, you can get started with pretty much zero, but with dropshipping, there's gonna be a cost attached to it because you're gonna have to buy products. You're gonna have to invest into ad uh, advertising for uh, to actually get sales. And so you might have a cost of, you know, 1,500, even $2,000 um, on, the, on, the, on the low end, right? So that is dropshipping. And here is the true opportunity. So I want you guys to imagine this scenario. You've got here a semi-successful Shopify store making you maybe a 10K a month. By the way, not such a simple task, okay? Uh, you've got a lot of expenses and moving parts and you're taking home $3,000 a month in profit, okay? So you've got a lot of expenses, you you know, buying a bunch of product, you've got, you, you maybe have uh, customer service, uh, you maybe have, you know, you're running uh, obviously advertising costs uh, with uh, Facebook ads, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, but, you know, taking into account that they haven't banned and your account because uh, you're building a dropshipping business. But let's just imagine that we're not doing dropshipping, okay? So let's just completely forget about dropshipping. Here we've got an e-commerce store, okay? Not so much dropshipping, but an e-commerce store. Now, imagine this. These are not your Shopify stores, but these are already successful Shopify stores out there, okay? So we've got this one, this one, this one, boom, boom. And we basically have a whole host of successful Shopify uh, stores out there already, okay? That already have their customer service, they're already paying for their products, right? They're already paying for their own expenses, right? So they've already done the, all the dirty work, I would say. And they're already managing to pull in good revenue. I'm talking maybe 50K uh, plus uh, per month, okay? So for example, we've got a successful Shopify store here making around $190,000 a month. Um, and that is revenue, by the way. And they need digital marketing. They haven't even tapped into Facebook ads. They're making 190 k a month, but that's mainly through, let's just say, influencer marketing, okay? They're, they're running some influencer campa uh, campaigns, uh, uh, you know, a few shout outs here and there from big accounts, and they're taking that home. Then we've got a second Shopify store. Oh, by the way, I apologize for the same picture every time. Um, but yeah, I mean, let's just imagine that they're selling uh, other products that are not shoes, okay? But uh, we've got a, another successful Shopify store making around $80,000 uh, per month, okay? And they also need digital marketing. Maybe uh, these guys have uh, just on, honestly just an incredible organic uh, audience, right? So, you know, maybe the, the product is so good that they have this, you know, whole, you know, uh, this host of brand evangelists that just rave about the product. And honestly, that that's a really sweet spot to be in. 
And uh, now they, they just know that they can turbocharge that with paid ads, with Facebook ads, and put it in front of a, an audience uh, and uh, you know, show them this incredible testimonial, show them this raving fans that are also gonna show up in the, in the comments uh, for them uh, and, uh, and really turbocharge their growth that way. And the final thing is we've got another successful Shopify store uh, making around $230,000 a month uh, revenue and they need digital marketing. Maybe these guys have been around for a while. Maybe uh, they were tapping into, uh, you know, they, they're, they're really big in retail, right? Maybe they're, they're really big in retail. Uh, maybe they are, you know, maybe they, they have uh, quite a few uh, wholesale contracts um, and they are in some reputable stores uh, like uh, North, Nordstrom, uh, okay, in the, in the US. Um, and now they're, you know, they're moving their business uh, away from so much the uh, the actual physical sto uh, physical stores to having an, uh, more of an online presence. Uh, and obviously, that that audience has bled through uh, on the shop uh, to the Shopify store, and they're making good money, but they haven't even tapped into Facebook ads. And I cannot begin to tell you like all these scenarios, guys. Um, I'm, I'm describing because like it's been my personal experience with uh, you know just speaking to hundreds of, of business owners at this point. Um, and this is you know a t very very typical uh, case scenarios. Okay. So you can charge these guys, right? You can go uh, to them and you can tell them, hey, I'm gonna run your paid ads uh, and here's kind of the, the strategy that we're gonna follow and we're gonna uh, do this, this and that for you and these are the benefits that, that you're gonna gain from this, et cetera, et cetera. Obviously you'd go uh, much further into the pitch and uh, I've got a few uh, YouTube videos in my channel, just like this one right here um, uh, that, that you guys can check out to see how you would actually go ahead and pitch your service. But let's just imagine that you're gonna charge these guys $2,600 per month, which, at the end of the day, it's not really that much for a uh, Shopify store that's making a, around 190k dollars uh, um, a month. Okay. Now, very big disclaimer here: these are not uh, very exact figures. Okay, these are not uh, the amounts that I would charge a uh, 190,000 dollar a month uh, Shopify store. Okay, these are not pricing guidelines. These are just some numbers that uh, that I kind of you know came up with. Obviously, I would take a lot of things into account, and I've got a, another video in my channel like uh, this one right here, uh, where I talk about what are some of the things that you need to consider uh, when pricing um, your services for e-commerce. But let's just assume that that you charge them that, okay? Uh, which is kind of accurate, uh, to be honest. Then uh, let's assume that for this uh, guys, you charge them 2,100 dollars to run their Facebook ads. And these are not huge numbers, guys. Like if you guys haven't been in the SME space for a while and you're just getting started, this might seem like a lot, but you know, really for business owners, you are there to make the money, right? And if they're gonna invest, you know, 2,100 into your service fee plus uh, ad spend, maybe, you know, five, seven, 10K, right? Uh, and you're gonna make them double that, uh, the total investment, it really makes sense for them, okay? Um, and the final one is that maybe you charge them 3,700 dollars because for example you know that they have really good cash flow they have really good cash reserves as well they are a very healthy business because as i said they have that retail component they have that wholesale component etc etc so let's add these up and you would get a total of eight thousand four hundred dollars per month and that is profit okay and all we're doing is we are not building our shopify stores right we are helping other people uh, build theirs up right we are helping them succeed and by doing that, we are getting paid a certain amount, uh, a certain fee, right? And not only that, but it is the complexity has been reduced to just one single service. How do we help them with Facebook ads or with you know SEO or Google ads, whatever you guys choose, or email marketing? But it's one single service that we help them with, and in return, they will pay us a fee for doing that. Okay? And we don't have to manage this you know huge team. We don't have to have this you know, uh, operating expenses. And not only that, but you can duplicate yourself, right? Can you guys see that? This, the person who's running the Shopify store, I mean, I, I, I know people who, who do this, right? But they're probably not running three other Shopify stores, right? That are making this, this uh, amount of money, right? They are just laser focused into their baby, into their product, right? Into their brand that they've built and that, that they truly care about and they want to make it successful. They're going to bring you in, right? As, as an e-commerce expert or as a Facebook ad expert to help them scale that. And the most blissful thing, as I said, guys, is you can duplicate yourself in a way, right? You can help five, even 10 uh, Shopify stores do the same, okay? And th what you're left with is profit, okay? Profit, very, very important word here. Uh, and that is already a six-figure income. That is roughly the equivalent of building a $30,000 a month dropshipping store, dropshipping store, okay? Uh, I hope you guys see just why I love the, the, the business model instead of the, the dropshipping business model. I've got nothing against dropshipping, honestly. I, I really, really don't, okay? Um, but it's just, it, it really comes, uh, obviously there's, there's a few things that I don't agree with uh, when it comes to you know dropshipping. But forgetting about the dropshipping model, the actual Shopify store e-commerce um, business model, the reason why I think it is much more blissful for a beginner to pick this path is because 
it is just optimized for profit. You can uh, you actually garner insane um, insane levels of, of experience because you're working with other uh, Shopify stores, right? You're seeing other case scenarios, case studies, right? You, you're getting accustomed to some of the problems that they face, right? And so that actually brings me to the final point, uh, which is in a gold rush, we sell shovels, okay? In a gold rush, we sell shovels. And what that means is the people that truly profit uh, from, for example, the, the growth of e-commerce is not so much, yeah, I mean, yes, you can build a widely successful uh, e-commerce store. And honestly, you know, I've got huge respect for uh, for my clients. They've got widely successful Shopify stores and e-commerce stores, and they've built incredible brands, right? But we, as especially as beginner entrepreneurs, if that's the case for you, maybe you are a seasoned entrepreneur, but as beginner entrepreneurs who are looking to uh, start maybe their first business or they're looking into other financial vehicles, what do we want to do in the gold rush of e-commerce and selling, selling stuff online? We don't want to go in and dig in uh, and dig up the gold, right? We want to sell shovels and we want to help people, right? We want to help people find gold. And what I would say also on, on that point is that this is a very fulfilling thing to do, right? To help people find their success, right? And uh, it's, 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 uh, it's something that, that a lot of people don't talk about, but I love the fact that I can help other e-commerce stores uh, and only just one, but I can help many, five, ten, right? E-commerce stores find their success, right? Help them scale online. And, and honestly, that, that is a really, really cool thing to do. When it comes to dropshipping, sure, you're, you're making good money, but is the product that you've chosen really because, you know, is, is it really to help out people or, or is it really to just make money, right? And what I can tell you guys, and this is just me, okay? I'm not saying this is going to be for you, but what I can tell you is money is great, right? But when you're making money and you don't feel like you're adding value to people or you're helping people out or you have this like, or there's some sort of like nobility in it, you can't really sleep well very, uh, at night. You can't really sleep very tight at night, okay? And I will leave it there, but uh, that, that's, that's really my take. And so the final thing is ensuring longevity. Uh, I've, I've spoken about this uh, very briefly, but you know, the first thing is cash flow. SMA provides the cash flow that you can then use to invest into passion project and long-term businesses, like building an actual brand, not a dropshipping brand, an actual brand, okay? Uh, it's one of the things that you need to keep in mind as well. You know, by, by doing this, by taking this route of helping other e-commerce businesses scale and find their own success and having just insane profit margins, we can actually build a good pile of cash uh, and, and have incredible cash flow that then you can use to reinvest back into a business or an actual brand or a passion project. But not only that, but as I said, by helping other e-commerce brands succeed, you get to understand the e-commerce business model inside out from brands playing at a high level. And you can, uh, and not only that, but also make incredible connections. Uh, you build your network up, right? Almost on a daily basis, I'm speaking to uh, business owners who I admire almost, right? I don't put them on a pedestal because I, I, I never like to do that, but it's just a level of respect that I have for them uh, and being able to connect with them and have them in my network is a very valuable thing to do, okay? Um, and, uh, and you can transfer these skills later down the line to your own brands, okay? And that is honestly, in my opinion, that is just a much better way to go about things because not only are you generating incredible cash, as I said, but you're also garnering these skills, right? This, you know, sales, marketing, you know, helping out the top, you know, the, the leading e-commerce brands, if that's the case for you, okay? Helping out the, the leading e-commerce brands, seeing, um, you know, seeing what works, what doesn't, right? And by helping them, by adding value to them, you're helping yourself, right? And it's almost this perpetual cycle um, where the e-commerce industry just gets better and better if you generally add value to them, uh, okay? So that is that for ensuring longevity, and uh, I think we are done. So guys, that is it for today's video. Hope you, number one, uh, got to see why I think, in my opinion, SMA is superior to dropshipping in many ways in, and, and in, in various situations, right? There are clearly scenarios where it's not gonna be, right? But in most scenarios and where most people and most viewers of this channel are at, I personally think that SMA is the way to go. Um, and uh, hopefully you've seen uh, why that is. If you've already picked social media marketing agency, hopefully you've seen kind of the, the way I approach my niche, uh, e-commerce niche, um, and, and honestly why, why I'm just in love with it and I'm very passionate about it. Um, not only about SMA, but the e-commerce uh, niche and, and helping uh, you know brand scale online. So I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, drop a like. It will help Charlatan with the algorithm and I'd really appreciate it. Also, leave down below any comments, any questions you may have on this video and I'll surely be checking those out. If you haven't subbed to my YouTube channel, I'm putting out four to five videos every single week on entrepreneurship and a 360 approach to SMMA with a specific focus on sales and outreach and also uh, e-commerce. So if you don't wanna miss that out, go ahead and subscribe to my channel. Also, if you haven't checked out my free private mentorship community on Facebook, The Client Closers, it's an incredible community full of like-minded people looking to scale their agency and level up in life. So if you don't wanna miss it, go ahead and apply with the link down below. And as always guys, hope everything's going well in your agency journey and I'll speak to you in the next one, peace.